What is Advaita or Advaita Vedanta? Advaita implies that one's true self is Brahman, universal consciousness, and that to attain oneness with Brahman, a person needs to seek knowledge of this truth. This involves the concept of Atman, which is roughly parallel to the biblical concept of a soul. The Atman or soul is the real self. As a result, Advaita Vedanta teaches salvation through knowledge. By overcoming one's ignorance, one can attain unity with the ultimate reality. Advaita Vedanta is especially concerned with mankind's mistaken perceptions that he slash she is a self or an I who is ultimately different from or separate from other selves. This lack of understanding is considered an illusion or maya and according to this belief system is the ultimate cause of immoral behaviors and therefore all suffering. In order to end suffering, a person must realize that he is part of the single, pure, unchanging reality of Brahman. In order to successfully navigate, oops, in order to successfully navigate this enlightenment, Advaita adherents follow a process of ethical actions, meditation, and study of scriptures, scriptures such as the principal Upanishads, the Vedas, Viveka Chudamani, Crest Jewelry of Discrimination, oops, Crest Jewel of Discrimination, Yoga Vasitha and Asta Vakra Gita or Asta Vakra Samhita, instructed by Guru Dev to study this year. The non dualistic Advaita philosophy believes that God and soul are not different, and that there is only one reality, and it is God. Souls come into existence because the one becomes many for his own joy or ananda. This dynamic power or shakti, he brings forth many worlds and many jivas or individual souls and subjects them through action of maya or illusion to the limitations of self. non-self or egotism, time, morality, awareness, ignorance, concealment, illusion, completeness, desires, and action, karma. Deluded, the souls continue their individual existence till they realize that their true nature, either by the grace of God and or through their own previous effort, this realization is called liberation or moksha. Once liberated, the individual soul realizes that it has always been and becomes one with itself. Advaita sees the realization of this oneness of the individual consciousness with the universal consciousness as the ultimate goal of all spiritual endeavor, which is expressed as thou art that. Advaita Vedanta texts are the Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, Vedanta, or Brahma Sutra, Sutras, Viveke Chudamani, and Astavakra Samhita. One additional philosophy that we study is Kashmir Shaivism. Kashmir Shaivism and Advaita Vedanta are both non dual philosophies that give primacy to universal consciousness. Kashmir Shaivism explains that reality is one and it names that reality Shiva or consciousness Chit. This pure consciousness manifests in the world as all things. God is understood to be both Shiva, male, and Shakti, female, and they are not separate. This pure consciousness manifests through Guru, the physical form as well as the non-physical form known as divine grace. This path is one of deep meditation and under guidance of a qualified guru, one who has walked the path and attained the goal. Kashmir Shaivism texts are Shiva Suttas, the Pratya 
Bajandrayam Spanda Karikas Vijana Bhairava Kularnava Tantra and Swami Lakshmanju's book Kashmir Shaivism The Secret Supreme Additional texts The Bhakti Sutras of Naranda The Yoga Sutras of Pantam Patanjali, the serpent power, the secrets of tantric and shakti yoga. Swami Muktananda's books, play of consciousness, from the finite to infinite, the perfect relationship. You can buy them used online to save money. Now, Vedanta recommends a threefold process to transform knowledge into wisdom. The first step, one needs to hear the teachings from a qualified source, a respected teacher, or directly from a guru. In satsang, we rely on reading the words of a saint. In an ashram, we sit with a respected teacher or guru, and we listen attentively to what he or she is sharing. In either case, we need to really listen in order to comprehend. This first step is called shravana, which is listening attentively in order to understand. The second step Vedantra recommends is thinking, reflection, and contemplation on what one has heard, which allows the teaching to go deeper into one's meaning. This is called manana, internalizing the teachings through deep reflection. The third step in transforming knowledge into wisdom is manifesting these teachings within one's being, having them become alive in our daily interactions. This third step of the journey to wholeness and holiness is called Nidhi Yasana. These three steps are classical Vedanta and when put into practice will uplift and transform one's consciousness. That's why most of our gatherings called Satsang dedicate one portion of the program to studying these teachings which purifies and uplifts the mind. A spiritual practice with Jnana Yoga, the yoga of knowledge. The second portion of each set saying is devotional chanting or kirtan, which has the power to open and purify one's heart. It's performed in a call and response fashion. The harmonium player calls out the words or mantras and the group responds with a full voice arising from the abdomen as a bold and melodious as possible without shouting. These powerful mantras then vibrate through the room as well as within our being, bringing us very close to meditation. Devotional chanting is a form of bhakti yoga. And last but not least, we always practice silence meditation, which has the power to awaken and unfold our inner divinity, giving us experience, unconditional love, and a deep peace. During meditation, we merge into the divine vibrations that we have created, allowing ourselves to bathe in the spiritual energy, which is very purifying and healing. Meditation is a spiritual practice within Raja Yoga. A Shanti Mandir Satsang may seem simple, but in simplicity lies a very powerful transformative energy. To learn more about our weekly program. Hey. <laughs> Highlighter? <laughs> or you can visit Guruji and request more information about ongoing local program. Baba Mukatanda taught the goal of meditation is to see God in one another. The greatest practice is to welcome one another with love and respect. Never forget, God dwells within you as you. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. <laughs> yes, I was guided to do this with you today. I apologize if I mispronounced and kind of read some words wrong. It was a little awkward and I was a little nervous. However, if you enjoyed this, pay it forward. You are loved. Feel your power, your presence. Feel it in your silence without any validation outside of yourself. 